Is this a loving kiss or something more sinister? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most unusual animal mating rituals. For this list, we'll be looking at the strangest coital customs in the animal kingdom. Which of these mating rituals stuns you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Garter Snakes Compared to other more dangerous snakes, garter snakes may seem a little ordinary. However, there's nothing ordinary about their mating ritual. And you like snakes, don't you, Barry White? I love the sexy slither of a lady snake. Oh, baby. These snakes, found in both North and Central America, will try their best to slither their way into each other's hearts. Many male garter snakes will find their mates through seeing who's hibernating with them, while others seek out female pheromones. But competition can be heavy, with many males vying for the affection of one female. This results in a mass of snakes known as a mating ball. And some males use treachery to get what they want. They'll release female pheromones of their own to fool their male competition. All's fair in love and war, right? Number 9. Greater Sage Grouses Want to see a live performance that's more memorable than most concerts? Check out the Greater Sage Grouse's mating dance. Talk about a rush! You'll be throbbing! You'll see vision! In the spring, males will congregate in areas known as leks, in which they compete with each other to prove their desirability to potential female mates. And they'll pull out all the stops to prove their worth, showing off their chests and tails and inflating special air sacs to create noises that are evidently irresistible. <laughs> And some sage grouses are so charismatic, they attract multiple mates, while others are left in the dust. But male sage grouses don't exactly embrace their future paternal status. After mating, the female sage grouse will raise their young on her own. We support single mothers, no matter what their species. Major daddy issues, check. Number eight, porcupines. We definitely wouldn't want to get anywhere near a porcupine, but they find ways to mate without hurting one another. Oh, oh my buns! There's a sharp pain in my buns! However, their mating ritual isn't something you'd want to discuss in polite company. Once a male porcupine has found a suitable female to reproduce with, he'll cover her with a powerful blast of urine, which can spark some intense feelings within the female. What is that? Is that piss? Is that piss? Should she be into it, she'll assume the mating position, and they'll take it from there. Time is of the essence, as the mating window for porcupines is only 8 to 12 hours per year. If you ever see a porcupine pee on another one, remember that they're experiencing a very intimate, if somewhat disgusting to us, moment. Number 7. A Daily Penguins Here's a mating ritual that's more awe than ew. Female Adelie penguins choose their mates through receiving gifts, in this case, rocks. Male penguins aim to woo potential penguin partners by bringing them pebbles. This is just what I need to store my rock collection. If a female fancies a pebble, she'll use it for lining her nest, and the mating can commence. However, one nice gift doesn't mean she's ready to make things official. If you don't want it, I know someone who does. <laughs> Female Adelie penguins will mate with many males, providing their pebbles are up to snuff, of course. Humans are also prone to swooning over rocks, but they tend to be a lot shinier. Jeez, I'm crow, look at the size of that rock! Number 6. Sea Slugs Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and if you asked a sea slug, they might say that they find us pretty gross, too. But we find sea slug mating rituals to be fascinating, to say the least. Most of these invertebrates are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female sex characteristics. And during mating, they'll use their male appendages to inject each other with prostate fluid, allowing the eggs to be fertilized. It seems more like a physical struggle than any kind of romantic encounter. Just be careful because it's a meaningful sweat and it means vintage. The male appendage is also covered in spines, which can cause some unintended harm during copulation. Oh, and for some sea slugs, not only does it fall off after mating, but they also have two spare ones available. So, like we said, fascinating. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? Number 5. Praying Mantises when you think of praying mantis mating rituals, your mind probably goes right to the female mantis chomping off the male's head post-coitus. However, that image is a bit of a misconception. Did you ever see a mongoose dance, or a scorpion with sunstroke sting itself to death? 
or a praying mantis eat her husband after making love? While so-called sexual cannibalism does happen between mantises, it's not guaranteed. And it is more likely to happen to mantises in captivity as opposed to ones in the wild. Additionally, the males will sometimes go on the offensive to keep their heads on and guarantee mating. But a headless mantis isn't necessarily a useless mantis. Male praying mantises can keep mating even after losing their heads. Now that's commitment. Whatever happens, we stay friends. Swear. 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 Number four, honeybees. Honeybee mating is a matter of sacrifice, or at least it is for the male bees. It's like there's a little dance. He has to kind of hover around her and he'll get closer and closer. These essential insects will mate in the air, with the female honeybee queens mating with male honeybee drones. She'll make the acquaintance of multiple drones during this time, as many as 24. Hey. Hi. Come here often. But finding a mate is bittersweet for the male. He'll put his endophallus inside the queen and it doesn't come out. When he tries to fly off, the bottom portion of his abdomen is torn, and it's bye-bye bee. Mayday! Mayday! Bee going down! <laughs> For male honeybees, the first time is also the last time. Number three, anglerfish. Humans affectionately refer to their partners as their better half. This is my better half, Blanche Dubois. But in the case of anglerfish, that's actually pretty accurate. These deep sea fish look like something out of a horror movie. And if you're looking to shudder, wait till you hear how they reproduce. The male bites the female to latch onto her, allowing their bodies to join together. This means they end up with a mutually beneficial relationship, with the male enjoying the female's nutrients and the female receiving the male's sperm. I think we're done, I think it's over. That's it. That's it then. The male will also shed off some appendages once he's secured a mate, like his eyes. And female anglerfish aren't limited to one partner either. Number two, pufferfish. Female pufferfish seem to have a thing for the artistic types. At least that's what seems to count when it comes to choosing mates for one specific species of pufferfish. The males will create elaborate circles with symmetrical designs on the ocean floor to attract females. They'll spend upwards of a week working tirelessly on these creations, which they'll enhance with things like bits of seashells. If a female favors a male in his creation, she'll lay her eggs right in the middle. And to think, a male pufferfish can do all this without spending any money on an art school degree. Yeah, I got a scholarship to Juilliard. Bri bri. You're in the money. Girls love the artsy type. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, bowerbirds. If you thought pufferfish were sharp designers, bow down to the awesome majesty of bowerbirds. These birds have a mating ritual so unique it's the basis for their name. To attract a female, the males will create twig structures known as bowers, which they will work hard to make as beautiful as possible. I like what you've done with your office, Raymond. It's cozy. All kinds of colorful objects are used to decorate these bowers, including rocks, petals, and coins. The males are strategic with how they put these things together, making themselves look bigger from the female's perspective. If she digs his decor, the mating can begin. And who isn't turned on by someone with a knack for interior design? I love what you've done with your locker, Zach. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.